Okay, so let's give you uh, a summary of the Southern African Equities Market Trading Day, Tuesday, the 27th of October. The GSC uh, went, of course, below, well below the 55,000 level, down 1.48%, a bit of a stronger correlation with the uh, emerging and developed markets today. All eyes on tomorrow's new budget by Tito Mboweni, the finance minister. The currency, as you saw earlier, also uh, uh, took a, a little some beating from the U.S. dollar. That's your 0.06% for the Lusaka Stock Exchange in Botswana. The markets finished slight, around, like just about flat 0.01, 6897.3. Mauritius uh, was uh, down 0.13% on the second trading day, 1476.98, and Zimbabwe. Is a stock market, stock exchange, the ZSE, down 0.41%, 1514.93. So, uh, check in with the news uh, with me, and you see the World Bank uh, is uh, tightening. And this is a very interesting story that the world, the uh, South Africa, is asking the World Bank for the $2 billion dollars budget support in the form of a loan, by the way. It was an application made in April. About the same time, the Nigeria also asked the World Bank for three billion U.S. dollars. But this money hasn't been coming through either for Nigeria or for South Africa. So what are we getting as far as South Africa is concerned was that the, the World Bank is asking the South African authorities to manage is uh, debt very carefully and reduce what you call civil service uh, overhead in terms of salaries and wages. But in particular, the World Bank is worried that the government in South Africa under President Maposa may use part of this $2 billion to bail out the ailing state-owned enterprises, South African Airways, ESCOM, the rest of them. So uh, South Africa is on a waiting list at the World Bank the same as Nigeria. So, where investors are looking to tomorrow's budget for action, by the way, we'll talk about that. Citigroup is looking to deepen its presence in emerging markets and all the way from Russia in to South Africa as well. Petra Diamonds, first quarter, reporting season, revenue up 33%, improved inventory sales and prices of diamonds that we saw a bit of a gentle comeback since the end of June. And Angola protests there against some of the um, uh, very hard economic conditions have resulted in violence. And the IMF is now highlighting the need for the second largest oil producer on the African continent to get its economic stability uh, right. But let's talk about Nigeria, and this is undoubtedly a nail-biting period for insurance firms, reinsurance companies, risk adjusters, and indeed insurance brokers. No thanks to a week of unrest that wrecked havoc of looting and damage to government, business, and private property in Lagos and elsewhere in the country. We continue to examine all the angles of the impact on the insurance sector. As we turn now to Olumide Bidakpo, who is the Managing Director and CEO at FBN Insurance Brokers. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. It's good to have you in our studios. Good evening. Thanks for having me. How are insurance brokers, your colleagues and yourself, assessing the claims and other related matters in relation to the current unrest and the resultant damages? Losing, arson. I'm sure you watched that video uh, in just a few minutes ago. That gentleman with a massive business of building materials, jacuzzi, tiles, water closet, whatever, and now he's on his knees, financially speaking, due to those looting and Arson. The level of destruction witnessed over the past few days is um, something unprecedented. And um, insurance industry in Nigeria will definitely be hit massively from the losses or claims that will be reported by insured policyholders. So it's massive, it's unprecedented, and um, it's just the, the, the reality on ground that we need to face. But the insurance industry in Nigeria will definitely have a lot of on their hands for the next couple of months. And, um, but the most important thing is that the assurance from the insurance industry is that there is succor. There will be financial cushion 
for insured policyholders. So at least that is something that a comfort that we can rest upon for now. I'm going to ask you this question. What you insurance chief executives have been doing over the last few days as you see these destructions, not just in Lagos, but elsewhere. What have you folks been up to? Yeah, a lot of discussions have been going on within the insurance industry. Uh, it's not a matter of I'm a broker. I don't carry any, uh, I don't take any risk. I don't pay any claims. It's a synergy thing. It's an industry-wide thing. So it's a chain. And discussions have been going on. The issue is, is there coverage, you know, adequacy of coverages. But chief executive of many insurance companies have come out openly to give assurance to the insured uh, public that there's security, there's capacity within the market to meet up with the possible claims obligations that will be coming up. And as insurance brokers too, we've been reaching out to our client, numerous calls, numerous inquiries from our policyholders, just seeking for reassurance that there is coverage in place for them. And that is going to be a collaborative thing. The brokers is out there to provide guidance, to guide the insured uh, our clients, our customers, on what and what to do on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that they have a uh, financial uh, cushion to meet up with these massive uh, losses that we are experiencing in the industry now. So it's a collaborative thing, it's a, it's a market-wide thing, and we're working together to ensure that value is delivered to policyholders. This is the time to uh, really drive home the value of having an insurance contract in place. So if we take a typical example of a vandalized, looted, and burnt facility of a typical business individual like that gentleman, uh, the Home Plus that we spoke about, uh, as, an as a CEO of an insurance brokerage firm, what are the steps he should be taking that you will be taking right now if he has a policy? Okay, the starting point is to first empathize with the client, which we've done. We've reached out to so many of our clients that have experienced one form of loss or the other. And then the most important thing is to ensure that the contract in place actually has that coverage. Because a typical insurance coverage, let's say for argument's sake, an automobile insurance policy or a property insurance cover, a standard policy excludes riot, strike, and civil commotion. So as professionals, as brokers, and as advisors to our client, what is the standard practice is to buy back those exclusions. Now, the starting point is to ensure that the coverage in place covers this exposure that has led to the loss. And then on a day-to-day -day basis, you are providing succor and comfort. The first thing is to provide assurance to the client, the affected client, that there is light at the end of the tunnel and is in form of financial cushion that the insurance contract has promised to deliver in the event of an insured loss. And I assume this is an insured loss. And at the end of the day, the advice on documentation, it takes two to tango, really. The insured must have a good knowledge of the supporting documents that they need to provide. And the underwriters, too, depending on the magnitude of the, the loss, we need to engage either a loss adjuster to uh, have a fair assessment of the loss. And at the end of the day, a fair equitable offer or settlement offer is expected from the insurance market. And the most important thing is to provide support at this time for all these businesses, not only businesses, even private individuals have been affected in one way or the other. And the best thing for the insurance industry currently is to delight the client, de delight the uh, policyholders in order to achieve a longer term uh, uh, increase in insurance uptake. And that's what we have to, to achieve. Uh, in, a, in a hypothetical situation, how long would it likely take? Yeah, 
Uh, you know, thank, you, you've mentioned it, hypothetical case. Uh, straightforward cases, claims are not supposed to be prolonged or delayed if the processes are well handled and managed. And like I said earlier, it takes you to tango. The insured has a role to play. The brokers or the agent has a role to play. And the market, the insurance, in, uh, the, the, the insurance companies, the risk bearers, they have a role to play. So is the timeliness of providing the necessary information and supporting document to the underwriters, to the insurance companies, that will facilitate early conclusion of reported cases. And that's the essence of having a professional uh, intermediary, a broker in between, so that it makes things easy. And the businessman or an individual could concentrate on their own primary assignment or operations, whereas you leave your broker or the advisor, your risk advisor, to handle the process of documentation of engaging the loss adjusters and ensuring that a fair settlement is obtained timely because time value of money is of essence too. So it's neither here nor there, but a typical claim that is uh, well processed should not take max, max, more than a month. Okay, now, now let's talk about the capacity of industry operators uh, like FBI insurance brokers to handle the enormity of destruction that we've seen so far. Yeah. Well, uh, FBI insurance brokers, we are risk advisors and um, we have both individuals, private individuals, SMEs, uh, corporate clients and public sector. All sectors were affected by this unique event that we have on our hand. The expertise is there. We have the expertise and the knowledge of the market and the product and then the process, providing guidance to the client on what and what to do, most especially on documentation. Because underwriters and loss adjusters will work with document to substantiate the laws that have been uh, sustained. So what we need to do and what we are doing currently is providing day-to-day -day support in forms of advisory to our client, our numerous clients, whether private individuals or business entities or even private, uh, public sector. We are there to provide necessary advisory roles and support to ensure that the, the, the process is seamless and at the end of the day, a fair settlement offer is obtained on a timely basis. We have uh, just about a minute to wrap up the, uh, the, this interview. Uh, thank you so much. But what are the major lessons that insurance brokers and the industry as a whole will take moving forward in matters of this nature, this unrest, which is, as we all know, unprecedented? A lot of lessons, a lot of takeaways, uh, not only as brokers, but because of time. For brokers, this is the time to actually confirm our value in the, in the insurance value chain. What do I mean by this is to ensure that clauses and terms or exclusions that could have knocked off some of these claims are written back at no extra cost or with marginal uh, premium cost to the client. The lesson here again is to capitalize on this unfortunate incident is quite unfortunate, but to drive the lesson home that the time to do insurance is now. We don't need to wait on when we have calamities on our hand. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Uh, Olumide Bidapo, the Managing Director and CEO at FBN Insurance Brokers Limited.